right? Day three done, congratulations. Most all of you are over the hump now. Uh, tomorrow, if you have a bad day, yeah, you're toxic. We'll talk more about that. I'll remind you of what I taught you. But um, the, the bottom line is, yeah, breakthrough day tomorrow. You know, I remember when my son was fasting. This is my youngest son, and he was like 12, and he fasted 11 days. Whole long story, it's in the book. I didn't make him fast, he chose to. But anyways, great story there, but he kept going and kept going and kept going. But I remember him saying, Dad, when am I going to feel like myself again? You talk about feeling amazing. I said day four, he woke up day four, and he said, I still don't feel well. And I said, well, give it time. Your brain's still not dialing in to the ketones yet. Well, halfway through the day, he was running around outside like, you know, no big deal. He went on to 11 days, so you could see it got much easier. The first three days, I was, you know, telling him to quit the fast, trust me on that. But anyways, remarkable because he got rid of his psoriasis and it broke him out of his addiction for carbohydrates. So, okay, I'm, I, I purposely opened the book up because, hey, you're gonna get the book. But um, there's some music in the background, I apologize for that. But uh, continued autophagy and new stem cell growth. So autophagy actually today and tomorrow kicks into high gear, especially tomorrow. Tomorrow is the magic autophagy day that sets us up for day five, which is the magic stem cell day. So, but I'm gonna show you, ah, oh, Dylan, I actually need my board, if you could go grab my board, um, because I, I forgot I could actually show you how to um, do the ratio. So, um, but continued hormone optimization. Day four, you really break into hormone optimization. The cells get really sensitive to the hormones, which is what we want. And we start to see the growth hormone really sail up as well. So all kinds of good things. Neuroepinephrine rises dramatically on day four, uh, which means it downregulates inflammation a lot. Overall sense of well-being because your brain is now using the ketones, and I've already talked about that. So, and by this time, all your hunger cravings are typically gone. You're fully functioning on uh, your fat and your ketones, your fat in your body, your ketones in your brain. And at this point, you should in fact be in max autophagy, every one of you. So. I'll remind you uh, to what that is. So, you know, if your glucose is not dropping and your ketones aren't rising, um, that's, a, that's an issue. Don't set it up there, then you can just pull it in. But um, the bottom line is, is that uh, you may in fact need some more electrolytes. Someone brought that up in one of the questions, and it's true. So you may get uh, more sea salt, do two teaspoons of sea salt instead of one. Or maybe you get an electrolyte that doesn't have sugar and you take an electrolyte that has some magnesium, zinc, and some other uh, minerals. But you know, that can be a help for some of you. Um, but you know, the, the bottom line though is, is that toxicity does in fact play the biggest role. When you start hitting max autophagy, your body's breaking in to some of these cells and out comes toxins and that can drop uh, the ketones and the glucose could not drop down. One of the points I made in yesterday's video was the fact that uh, your ketones, even though they're up, if your glucose isn't dropping, that's a problem because your, your brain won't use the ketones because it favors the glucose. And that's as simple as that. Glucose is more damaging, uh, oxidative, so the body will burn it first. So we wanna see the glucose trending down and the ketones trending up. So that's a, a great question um, that somebody else brought up, even though I brought it up yesterday, I, I wanted to rehash it. So we'll bring in the board here in a second, and I'm gonna show you how to know if you're in max autophagy. But at this point, no doubt your glucose should be trending down. If it's not, that's a problem, and it usually is, in fact, uh, toxicity. And therefore, it could be stress. If you're doing too much activity, working too hard, your glucose could be dumping still and trending up. So again, some of you may just need to chill more, relax. If you get stressed out a lot, your cortisol goes up and glucose goes up. So that could be another reason why that's occurring. So be careful, don't exercise too much. Don't do too much exercise or do too much activity. And no doubt about it, um, don't get stressed out. So, all right, let's pull it in. Um, give me one of those, okay. I'll use, I'll use my numbers today just for fun. Is that in the view? Cool, okay. All right, so a one-to-one -one ratio is what we want, meaning glucose and ketones. Now, I know what you're thinking. 
Um, Dylan, you may have to do some math for me. Let's say your glucose is 80, okay? I'm gonna do one this way first, and let's say your ketones are 2.2. You have to divide your glucose, um, I almost did plus, I meant to do division. So you have to divide, not plus. So you have to divide your uh, glucose by 18. So 80 divided by 18, give me that number. 4.4. Okay, 4.4, and your ketones were 2.2. You can see you're not a one-to-one -one ratio. Your ketones have to go up, and your glucose has to go down. Make sense? So that is not good yet, all right? So let's do mine. Today I was, um, my first reading, I had a 62 glucose. So divide 62 by 18, give me that number. And my ketones were 6.2. 3.4. Okay. Um, 4.4. 4. All right, versus 6.2. You can see way above the ratio. So if my ketones were only 3.4, I would be at a one-to-one. -one. So I'm double, basically, what it takes the one-to-one -to, -one to be at max autophagy. So therefore, I was getting double autophagy, so to speak. So this ratio, I have to give credit where credit's due, was uh, called, it's called the target zone, and it was developed by Thomas Seyfried, uh, amazing uh, cancer doctor, wrote the book, Cancer is a Metabolic Disease. They noted as tumors would stop shrinking or start shrinking again, that when they got to this one-to-one -one or above, they would watch as the tumors started to shrink again and shrink more rapidly as they superseded that one-to-one -one ratio. So pretty accurate assessment. So I love the target range because he was one of the ones to first talk about also that if glucose isn't dropping, you really don't benefit from the ketones, especially our brain. So I would argue that benefit even uh, in general. That's why a lot of people right now are taking exogenous ketones, ketones from the outside in. And I'll say this, in your body, you're not meant to really have high ketones in elevated insulin or glucose. So it should bypass one another as a normal state. So we don't know what's happening when we have, remember if glucose is up, insulin's up, but there's some talk about maybe that's not good to have high ketones and high insulin at the same time. But I can tell you this, you can get a benefit from exogenous ketones, especially if your glucose is down and your ketones are high. But I'm not a big fan of taking exogenous ketones all the time. The reason is, is I believe it can start to slow down fat metabolism. Just think about this for a second. You make ketones from burning fat. The body, the brain knows the level of ketones that it needs and that's in the system. So there's a feedback me mechanism, just like the thyroid hormone or any hormone, right? As thyroid hormone increases, it feeds back through the hypothalamus pituitary and it tells the body to produce, it'll stimulate the hypothalamus. It'll say, produce, it'll tell the, th uh, the, the pituitary to produce less um, thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, and then your hormones lower, right? So there's that feedback mechanism. Well, same true for ketones. There's a feedback mechanism. So if you're constantly taking ketones, you're going to slow down fat metabolism eventually. Might not happen right away, but eventually. So, uh, you know, I can, I'm a believer in taking them as a biohack. Uh, you want to exercise, you want that extra boost of energy. You're taking a test, you're intermittent fasting, boom, you blow in some extra ketones to get that brain hack in there. But taking them randomly, I think is a better strategy than taking them all the time because we don't want to slow um, gluco, we don't want to slow, we don't want to have gluconeogenesis, but we don't want to slow fat metabolism. So um, you might want to write that in the title there, Dylan, because that question alone uh, about taking our, our exogenous ketones good. So the answer is maybe, it depends how you take them. Now you all watching know how to take them uh, and how to biohack with them. So I think that's a great thing. But anyways, um, this is the one-to-one -one ratio Listen, most of you should be in that today. As you can see, I was well in that today. Uh, I dry fasted for two days, so you know that probably is what threw that number up, and, uh, and then I'm evolving into a partial fast. So um, I will share more about what, how I'm partial fasting this time, very different. 
uh, using a different product, experimenting with a product that a friend of mine built. So um, I will share that with you. Many of you are doing the fasting mimicking diet. Share your numbers, uh, we wanna see. Um, and especially those of you who've done water fasting versus partial fasting versus uh, fasting mimicking diet, share your results with that because I wanna know which one worked better for you, which one did you like more? So please comment because I'm going to, going to go through, answer your questions. Those of you watching right now, put your questions down because I'll answer them. Um, and I will uh, also look through the comments. I really wanna know uh, your experiences in these different types of fasts. Many of you have been fasting with us a long time and like me, last one I did a full water fast, this one experimenting with dry fasting and a partial fast. So, and doing the partial fast differently. So let's try different things. We learn from it, right? And we all learn. So put down in your comments, please, how you're feeling, what your numbers are. Are you in max autophagy? Say, yes, I am in a max autophagy. So I wanna know that. I wanna know I am not in max autophagy. Please put that in the comments because I wanna see that. Here we are day three. I wanna know. Uh, every one of us wanna know. And um, same with tomorrow, we can write that down. So thank you for the comments. Thank you for sharing. Please share because this during the fast, we know that we build the biggest following uh, during the fast and it keeps building at 24,000 people. So that's awesome. But it only happens when you share. So those of you who share all the time, thank you for tell doing you, that. Tell people to like the video. Too. Yeah, and like the video. You know, Dylan, my son, tells me the things that I should tell you because he knows. I don't know this stuff. I just bring the content, man. <laughs> but anyways, thank Dylan too because he's putting the links in when I mention stuff. Uh, and well, I mean, they, uh, we have a team that helps with all that, but Dylan's uh, helping out a lot with that and making sure your questions get answered too. So, but I make sure that I come off the video and I get right on your questions to benefit those people who come live. So I benefit those people. All right, that's it. We will see you tomorrow. Uh, yes, stay tuned. This, it's an important day, but we're going to, uh, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing for my partial fast. That's one little surprise. Um, but anyways, I have another message for you. I will see you then, and I'm gonna start telling you how to break the fast. Very important, because if you break the fast incorrectly, you can stimulate a hormone reaction that is dangerous. In at best, you ruin all the results of your fast. So breaking the fast, very important. Stay tuned for that, all right? We're good. We'll answer questions tomorrow night. I'm gonna actually open up for more questions tomorrow night. So pay, uh, you know, come with your questions ready for tomorrow night at six. There you go.